Welcome back, Pac-12. Good to see you. Welcome back to Major College Football Competition. And welcome, everyone, to the Voice of College Football as well. Best discussion, debate, and analysis based on your contribution, your support. Please hit the like button and share the videos out on social media. Subscribe here at the Voice of College Football. Let's run down another conference power rankings. And we're so happy to see that the Pac-12 is thriving and strong. This was a bad, bad conference for a number of years. Maybe not as bad as the national media played it out to be, but uh, three and 16 against the other conferences, BYU and Notre Dame included in 2021 is kind of hard to mask. That's awful any way you size it up. The conference has been bad. Not in 2022. Really good conference, strong conference, deep conference, deep conference at the top. Not a great conference, not arguably the best conference by any stretch of the imagination, but a good, thriving, exciting conference with six really good football teams. Let's round them down. Let's start at number 14, and that one's obvious. Colorado's terrible. They are probably the worst team. Yes, they are the worst team in the Power Five and worse than most of the group of five. One in 11. All right, let's forget 2022 because Dion's on the scene. That's the big high for 2022. Dion to the rescue, the savior of the program, bringing his own luggage. Look for the Colorado Buffs to look much different in 2023. The low, everything was the low in 2022. They got killed every week, except for when they played Cal. They somehow beat Cal. So you can bet what the low for the Cal football season is going to be. Colorado at number 12 in the Pac-12. At number 11, a much better football team, even though they're still awful, Stanford. 3-9 and nine this past season. And uh, the big high in the season for Stanford, obviously the Notre Dame win. They go to South Bend and they defeat Notre Dame. How that happened, I have no idea. Not that Notre Dame's a great team, but they're a good team. They're a really good team, strong team. So much more talented than Stanford, and Stanford was awful, awful. But they beat Notre Dame. That's the high. The low, David Shaw leaving the program. This is a guy who took over for Jim Harbaugh and continued what Harbaugh started. And this was an elite, elite program in college football. No, they didn't make a playoff. No, they did not win a national championship. But Rose Bowl appearances, top five finishes, David Shaw through 2015, 2016, 17, 18, still good, still top 25 good, and then just off the rails since then. Really bad football seasons, bad football team, and David Shaw said, I've had enough. And uh, we will look forward to the future of Stanford football. And the low, obviously, David Shaw's tenure came to a close after a number of awful seasons. Stanford at number 11 in the Pac-12. At number 10, we go to Arizona State, 3-9. and nine. And the high on this season was they somehow found a way to beat Washington at home, 45-38. Defeated a good 10-2 Huskies team. The low, the Herm Edwards experiment did not work in the end. They had some decent seasons under Herm Edwards. Uh, eight and five in 2021, but after losing to Eastern Michigan and considering that um, the team was not performing well at one and two, again, lost to a Mac school. Also, the eight and five finish looked better than it really was. And uh, some of the off field issues uh, that is still under investigation concerning the NCAA and Herm Edwards shown the door. So losing to Eastern Michigan and losing their head coach, and again, that experiment failing, that's the low for Arizona State. Among the highs, not necessarily a home run higher, we don't know. It's the uncertainty, but yet the hope of hiring a new head coach in Oregon offensive coordinator Ken Dillingham, Arizona State number 10 in the Pac-12. At number nine, Cal at four and eight, two and seven in the Pac-12. The high for Cal is... They beat Notre Dame. Well, a lot of Cal fans would tell you they beat Notre Dame. They lost to Notre Dame. They threw a Hail Mary into the end zone, and they had some questionable calls go against them in the fourth quarter of that game. But Cal played Notre Dame tough. The other high is like a lot of the big rivalry games across the country. If you're going to have a bad season and win only a few games, beat your rival. 
and Cal won the big game. The low on the season was Cal somehow was the only team in America that figured out a way to lose to Colorado by a touchdown. Justin Wilcox tenure is not going quite well. Another subpar season for Cal at 4-8. and eight. At number 8 in our Pac-12 power rankings at the Voice of College Football, a resurgent program in Arizona under Jed Fish. Yeah, they look like a football team this year. They went 5-7. and seven. They won three games in the Pac-12. The high on the season, obviously, going to the Rose Bowl and defeating a UCLA team that at that point had thoughts of a college football playoff run. And then also, after losing five consecutive games to their arch rival, they won back the Territorial Cup and defeated Arizona State. Yes, Arizona at 5-7. and seven. Jed Fish doing a heck of a job picking up Jaden Delora from Washington State. This was an exciting offensive team to watch. The low on the season, really considering what Arizona football has been since 2018, there were really no lows. Now, you would like to have seen more of a competitive game against the likes of Utah and Oregon. They got trounced in those games, and they lost to Cal, a bad football team, by 18. But no real lows for Arizona football. Number eight in our Pac-12 rankings after a 5-7 and seven campaign. All right, now we check in with uh, all postseason players in the current bowl season. And Washington State, Cougars finish at 7-5, and 4-5 five, and five in the Pac-12. The high, they went to Madison, took on a top 15 team at the time, Wisconsin. And uh, they were 17-point underdog. And the Cougs came back to Pullman with a victory over the Badgers. Big win for Washington State. There is a 17-point dog. The low on the season... They couldn't beat any winning team. So Washington State basically, aside from the Wisconsin game, took care of the dredge of the Pac-12, and they were able to not do anything else. They were 0-5 against winning teams, and uh, they had a shot against Oregon in a 44-41 exciting game, but Cam Ward threw a pick late uh, that turned into a pick six and blew the game against Oregon, or otherwise they could have broken through against the upper echelon of the Pac-12. But at number seven is Washington State, and on their way to a Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl date against Fresno State. Now, as we get to the top six in the Pac-12, you can pretty much rank them any way you want. I know Utah should be number one. They're the Pac-12 champion, but even they lost two other games to those five other teams. So, Really, they all won games against each other and had similar records and similar resumes and credentials. But we're putting UCLA at number six. Rebound season for Chip Kelly and company. Really his first good, solid, really strong season at UCLA. The eight and four season, they didn't beat anyone. Well, they did this year. The nine and three UCLA Bruins got off to an easy 4-0 start, played three horrible teams outside the conference, won the Colorado game, so they hadn't done much at that point. Then they were extremely impressive in defeating Washington and Utah. Those were the highlights of the UCLA season. The low for UCLA is the game that should have been the big high. They were playing for a Pac-12 championship game appearance against arch-rival USC. Three DTR uh, interceptions cost the Bruins. They lost a tough one. Classic game against USC, 48-45. That's the low for UCLA. And of course, losing the week before against Arizona in upset fashion is a two-touchdown favorite. UCLA marches on. They've got a Sun Bowl date against Pitt of the ACC this postseason. All right, num number five in the Pac-12 is Oregon. Bo Nix, great season. The Ducks played well. Finished 9-3. and three. Okay. The high was a win against UCLA in which their offense was scintillating in that game, scoring 45 points against the Bruins. They also won in a very different way with defense, running the football, great defensive stand against Cam Rising and company, defeating the Utes 20-17. to 17. But the low on the season for the Ducks, yeah, they couldn't follow that up with another win that they needed in the Civil War against Oregon State. They blew a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter to lose to Oregon State as the Beavers ran the ball down their throats. And Oregon lost a chance to get Dan Lanning to his first conference championship game in his first season. Also, of course, the big low for Oregon was getting annihilated in Week 1. Not the loss to Georgia, but 49-3. Yikes. All right, at number 4... 
in the Pac-12 is Oregon State. Got to give them the nod over the Ducks. They won the game head-to-head. 9-3 and three for the Beavers. Great season coming off a 7-5 and five season this year before. And they give Jonathan Smith a big contract extension. Won the Civil War. The aforementioned 17-point comeback to win it over the Ducks. Huge game. Huge breakthrough in the rivalry. And again, a 9-3 and three record for Oregon State. Their best in a decade. They defeated Boise and Fresno State outside the conference to get their season rolling. The Fresno State game was remarkable. They went for it on fourth down when they could have kicked the game-tying field goal. Went for it on fourth down, scored the game-winning touchdown, really risked it there. The low for Oregon State, back-to-back losses against USC and Utah. And the quarterback play was really what let them down. Eight interceptions in the two games. And they played USC to the wire and still with four interceptions, 17-14 game, then got bludgeoned by Utah the next week. Oregon State's got a opportunity to win a 10th game as they take on the SEC's Florida Gators in the Vegas Bowl. Top three in the Pac-12. Let's go to Washington. Huskies finished at 10-2. and Kalen DeBoer coming in from Fresno State. What a job he has done from 4-8 and eight under Jimmy Lake to 10-2. and two. The big high on the season... Well, 37-34 at Autzen Stadium against Oregon. Phenomenal win there. And then, of course, a sixth straight victory on the season, defeating Washington State in the Apple Cup, scoring 51 points. Michael Penix had a remarkable year, finished in the top seven of the Heisman voting. The low, obviously, was that Arizona State game. Otherwise, they would have been playing in the conference title game. They lost to Arizona State, bad, bad football team, by a touchdown in the desert. Washington moves on to an intriguing matchup against Texas in the Sark Bowl at the Alamo Bowl. All right, top two in the Pac-12 are obvious. Number two is USC. Lincoln Riley, what a job he's done. He brought in a whole flip of the roster, including Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams, and USC goes on a big run. Uh, They lose the Utah game on the road in controversial fashion, 2 point play after the pass interference touchdown boom there you go they lose 43 42 so that was the low on the season until the real low came when they had an opportunity for redemption and got annihilated in the second half up 17 to 3 second quarter they get blitzed by utah and run off the field in losing that one 47 24 the big high Sure, they came into the UCLA game at 9-1, and one, but what had they really proven? Their best win was Oregon State by a field goal. They had beaten a lot of bad teams and barely escaped some of those games against the likes of Cal, Arizona, Arizona State. Not impressive wins. And then those back-to-back scintillating offensive performances against UCLA and Notre Dame. Two quality teams, the high for USC. And then this past Saturday night, At uh, the Downtown Athletic Club, Caleb Williams uh, setting a record for USC and Heisman wins with eight. The high for the Trojans as they conclude a remarkable bounce back here in Lincoln Riley's debut. 11-2 and a trip to the Cotton Bowl against Tulane coming up. And then finally, we have to honor the Pac-12 champions as, of course, number one in the Pac-12. And they deserve it. They've played in four or five conference championship games. They are back-to-back Pac-12 champions. They own the conference right now, and it's Utah. So that's the great highlight of the season, obviously, is that emphatic beatdown in the second half in Vegas against USC, taking a team that could have run away with the ball game early as they were down 17-3, and USC was on the brink of blowing them out of the stadium, turning it around, playing their brand, physical football in the second half, and sweeping USC, of course, playing a complete game in the second half. And yes, that's the high in the season. The low for Utah in the season, week one, they go to Gainesville, take on a Florida team that, sure, they've got SEC talent. They're not a pushover, but Utah should be the better team. Cam Rising makes a mistake. They throw an end zone interception. They lose to Florida And that uh, pretty much killed their college football playoff hopes to a certain extent right out of the gate. Utah, Penn State in the Rose Bowls. The Utes try to win a Rose Bowl after losing 
to Ohio State last year. Our Pac-12 power rankings here at the Voice of College Football look like this. And the top six are that close. Utah 1, USC 2, Washington 3, Oregon State 4, Oregon, UCLA at 5 and 6. Then there's a drop-off to Washington State. Then another drop-off to Arizona at 8, Cal 9, Arizona State at number 10, Stanford at 11. And Dion's on his way. He's already in Boulder, so you can forget 2022 if you're a Buffs fan. And for many of you, you're becoming Buffs fans now. Could care less about Colorado football before, but you are now Buffs fans because of prime time. All right. We appreciate you being here at the Voice of College Football. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media, subscribe, hit that bell for the notifications to know when we go live right here at the Voice of College Football.